Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, it is Donnie coming at you with another Linux security report. And this time we are at the hackernews.com. We have an article about how New Trojan turns thousands of Linux devices into proxy servers. And I know I've said this before, I keep hammering it home that we as Linux users cannot just be all smug about how our operating system is more secure than Windows and that we never have to worry about security, we never have to worry about getting any types of malware on our systems. Well, we do have to worry about getting malware on our systems. Now, it is true that there are certain types of malware which don't really affect Linux, like for example here, and this is a little something here that I do need to correct. Linux doesn't get viruses. It's a myth. Well, actually, it's not a myth. Linux doesn't get viruses because what they really should say here is Linux doesn't get malware. It's a myth because there are a lot of different types of malware out there. And a virus is one thing. It's one type of malware. But this article is about Trojans, which is a completely different type of malware. So your viruses are generally thought of as a Windows problem. Trojans, however, can affect any operating system. A virus is going to automatically do damage to your computer if you click on a website, for example, just visit an infected website, or if you just download a file and open that file if, even if it's just some sort of a data file, PDF file, graphics file, whatever, if it's infected, it'll put a virus on a Windows machine. So far, you know, we don't really have viruses for Linux, but we do have Trojans and other types of malware. So a Trojan is going to be a program which you would download and you would think that it's a program which does something good but you run it and it might appear that it's doing the good thing that it's advertised to do but then you will find out later that it's actually doing some sort of harm to your system either deleting files or sending information home to a, a, a command and control center whoever's uh, to whoever is operating that Trojan or whatever right so it's a completely different thing. So let's get those terms straight. But uh, anyway, we have a new Trojan that's been discovered in the wild that turns Linux-based devices into proxy servers, which attackers use to protect their identity while launching cyber attacks from the hijacked systems. So it sounds like they're using these Linux devices uh, as maybe... I don't know, it doesn't really say for sure, but maybe denial of service uh, attacks or something like that. I really don't know. But anyway, uh, you can go ahead here and read about this. I'm not going to read the, whole, the entire article. But uh, anyway, one thing it does here is once backdoored and the attacker gets the list of all successfully compromised Linux machines and then logs into them via SSH protocol and installs a SOX 5 proxy server using this Linux Proxy 10 malware on it. And the Linux malware is not all sophisticated because it uses a freeware source code of Satanic SOX server to set up a proxy. And according to the security firm, thousands of Linux-based devices have already been infected with this new Trojan. And then, I mean, you can go on and read about it uh, further. But uh, the bottom line here is this is not the first time that Linux malware like this has been discovered. And it tells about another incident there that happened over a year ago. And over here at the register.co.uk, here's another article about another type of Trojan that targeted badly secured Redis servers and turned them into coin mining monsters. And this is from last August. But there's, there's one thing here in common with these two stories. It's the fact that it's not the operating system itself that's not secure, that's poorly designed. You know, Linux is designed very well. It's, it's designed a lot better than what Windows is in a lot of ways, so far as security goes. And one of the ways that it is better is that by using 
unprivileged accounts instead of administrator accounts all the time, the way that, that is common with Windows, you know, we have a better separation between administrator privileges, super user privileges, and normal user privileges. Problem is, too many people out there completely negate that advantage by logging in as the root user all the time. And so in this case here, it appears that Linux users and administrators had been allowing secure shell login via the root user account. That is a, that is a big, big security no-no. Because if, you know, if somebody can break into that root account, then it's, it's like game over. They can do anything. And that's apparently what happened here with these devices, even though it doesn't really make it that clear exactly how the chain of events went. But it's already been known that other servers have been compromised, other Linux servers have been compromised because they've allowed the root user to log in via Secure Shell. And on top of that, they used a weak root user password. So that was not really asking for trouble. That was more like demanding trouble. So the, the one thing you really want to do, if you have any type of server or device that can be accessed from the internet, for God's sake, disable root user login via Secure Shell. It's not that hard, okay? And force everybody to log in with normal user accounts. Give them the proper pseudo privileges to do their jobs and only to do their jobs if they need pseudo privileges at all. And just don't let them log in via the root account. And then on top of that, you can also just enable the login via the public-private key exchange and then disable the username and password login altogether. And that way, when all these botnets out there scan your systems and find that they're not allowed to log in via username and password, they'll just go away and leave you alone, okay? And over here is the same way it was uh, this problem here with Reddit, with the Trojan that got planted with uh, the Reddit users. Then it was, again, just a simple matter of having a badly configured Redis server. So the good news is that while the Trojan target Linux systems, it doesn't rely on a Linux flaw to run. The problem is instead between the ears of those who run Redis without requiring a password for connections. If that's you, know that the Trojan will use Redis to make a connection and start dialing the parts of itself that do real damage. So, yeah, uh, like I say, you know, it doesn't matter what operating system you run. None of them is going to be completely secure unless you make it secure. It's got to be configured to be secure, and you have to not do dumb things like allowing passwordless login into a server, okay? So anyway, I think that's pretty much it for the Linux security report for today. If you like the videos, be sure to like and subscribe and tell your friends about us and check out the other videos here on my channel. We got some good tutorials, commentary, what have you. I try to make something for everybody. So anyway, I think that's it. So we'll catch you next time and y'all take care.